In this video, we're going to look at sync, MIDI and USB. First, let's talk about sync. The S2400 can provide the master clock and other equipment can synchronize to it, or it can synchronize to other equipment. To access the sync settings, hit shift and sync. At the top of the menu, we have options for the clock source. The first option is internal, which is the machine running from its own clock. This is 96 pulses per quarter note, if you're wondering. Its clock source can then be set to MIDI DIN, which is MIDI clock received via the 5 pin DIN input. It can be MIDI clock over USB B or USB host, or it can be clock in, which is a pulse based clock most commonly associated with modular equipment and hardware, which is received via the rear 3.5mm clock input jack. If you select any of the external clock sources, the run stop key is no longer functional. However, shift plus run stop will force a start or stop. With record whilst externally clocked, if you press record slash edit and run slash stop, recording is armed, but it will not start recording until you send it a start message. However, you can override this by pressing shift, record edit and run slash stop. So if you want to record on the machine in isolation without playing anything else, you don't have to keep flipping backwards and forwards between internal and external clock sources. Next, we have our control settings. We can set the device ID, which you'll need if you're working with MIDI machine control, which you can turn on or off with the next setting. You can set the control channel, which is the MIDI channel over which the S2400 receives messages that control its operation. Right now there are options for pattern change messages, but more will be added to the S2400 in the future. Here you can choose whether there is no pattern change message, whether it's received from a program change message, or whether it's received from CC32. The next accordion gives you your MIDI DIN jack options. Here you can choose whether the S2400 outputs MIDI clock, sends MIDI notes out, receives transport in and or receives MIDI notes in. And if it does receive MIDI notes, does it take the level from the incoming velocity value or use the level slider? This is similar to how the dynamic pad setting works. It's worth noting that transport messages like start, stop, continue and song position pointer are ignored unless the clock source is internal or the message comes from the selected external clock source. The design of the S2400 is such that it doesn't send MIDI, transport or notes back to the device that has sent MIDI to it, as obviously that creates all kinds of problems. The MIDI notes, channels and modes for each track can be edited from the map settings which we'll look at in a moment. Whilst covering MIDI, there is a through jack for interconnecting multiple devices. This takes a copy of the input signal received by a device and passes it on to the next device. Most commonly, this is used to daisy chain devices together so that they're all receiving MIDI clock from the same source, for example. Below our MIDI DIN jack options, we find accordions for the USB B jack and USB host jack. The options here are the same as they were for the MIDI DIN jack, the only difference being the physical input they relate to. Below the USB options, we find a clock in jack accordion. Here we can set the function. Ignore means that the S2400 will ignore a clock signal it is receiving. Clock means that it will take a clock from the clock input. Reset means that the pattern playing from the S2400 will be reset to the beginning by a pulse signal received from the clock input. This is mainly meant for working with sequences that send reset pulses. Next, you have your tracks A1 to D8. This means that the selected track will be triggered from the clock input. If the clock jack function is set to clock, we need to tell the S2400 what the incoming clock resolution is. This can be 16ths or 12, 24, 48 or 96 pulses per quarter note. The S2400 still runs at 96 pulses per quarter note and interpolates the clock ticks in between the lower resolution input clock pulses. Finally, we have an option labeled missed ticks equals stop. As the S2400 doesn't have a separate jack input for reset messages, this option is used to define how many missed clock ticks have to pass before the S2400 assumes the clock source has stopped, at which point it resets itself. The number of missed ticks needed before the S2400 resets to the start of a pattern or song can be from 1 to 99, and zero ticks means the feature is off. In the next accordion down, we find options for the clock out jack. Here we can set the function. Off means that the clock output will be switched off. We then have our clock output resolutions from 96 pulses per quarter note down to eighth notes. Run slash stop means that the clock output is on when running and off when stopped. 
This is how the old din sync standard works. Reset sends a pulse at the beginning of a pattern in order to reset an external sequencer at the same time, for example. At the end we have our tracks from A1 to D8. If you select one of these, a clock pulse will be output every time the chosen track is triggered. Below this we can set the clock's note swing, which can be default, which matches what you've set in the swing menu, or it can be a manual value from 50 to 75%. Naturally this only applies when the clock out jack function is actually clock out. Finally we have options for the pulse length in milliseconds from 1 to 99. This is the amount of time the clock out pulse is on, and it can be adjusted so that it is detected effectively by equipment you send it to. At the bottom of the sync settings menu we find the MIDI map accordion. Here you can load and save maps. When connected to a computer in USB mass storage class mode, you will see that there is a specific folder for MIDI maps. Dot map files can be loaded from any folder, but they will always be saved to the MIDI maps folder. There is also an option to save your map to your current project. If you do this, the map will be loaded when you load the project and resaved each time you save that project, including any changes you've made. So be mindful whether you want your maps to be discrete or whether you want them to be intrinsic to a particular project, as you can do either. So if you've mapped your S2400 to control a specific bit of hardware, or someone else has mapped a piece of hardware to control the S2400, you can save and share your maps with others. There is then a clear map option which clears a map you've loaded or any changes you've made to any fields and resets all values to the defaults. Below this we find the MIDI map settings for each track, A1 to D8. These are the settings that determine what MIDI messages are output by the S2400 as well as what incoming messages the S2400 responds to. You can set the track's mode as none, percussion or pitched. None means that no MIDI messages will be sent or received from that track. Percussion means that it sends and receives note on off messages with a fixed note number. Pitched means that the received note is interpreted as pitch and the output note number corresponds to the pitch as you've repitched it on the machine. Next is the note number. For pitch tracks, the note number specified here corresponds to the unshifted sample. Pitch shifted notes output note numbers above or below that bass note and received note numbers are translated into the appropriate amount of shifting. Finally, you can choose the MIDI channel from 1 to 16. By convention, percussion notes are sent and received on channel 10, but you can use any channel that works for your setup. Mapping a controller to tracks is a piece of proverbial cake. Press a pad on the S2400 and the sync menu scrolls to that pad's map settings. Select that track with enter or the encoder and press a pad or key on a connected controller and the note and channel are filled in for you. So here I've connected a Keystep Pro via the USB host jack and I've selected track A1 and as I press notes it's adjusting the values for me automatically. Another thing to mention here, the note and channel are only automatically filled in whilst a track is selected and you're editing a map field. This protects fields from being changed by incoming MIDI unintentionally. So as a first example, I've mapped my Keystep Pro to play track A1 in pitched mode. As another example, I've mapped one octave of a C major scale to tracks A1 to A8. So the note C is track A1, the note D is track A2, the note E is track A3, etc. I've assigned the same sample to each of those tracks, repitched it and activated the gated mode. This is a new feature that will be covered in the next video, but it basically means that a sample will be played when a pad is held down and it will stop when a pad is released. It works the same when using external controllers. So now I can play chords from an external controller. Another example, I've mapped 18 tracks, A1 to C2 on the S2400 to the corresponding 18 MIDI notes that trigger the 18 sounds on this Oberheim DX. So now I can sequence it from the S2400.
whilst we're here, I can also take a pattern I've recorded on the DX itself and then send MIDI clock from the S2400 and having matched up the PPQN, have the two playing together with the S2400 as the master. Or conversely, I can send MIDI clock from the DX to the S2400 and have the two play together with the Oberheim as the master and the Euler as the follower. In this final example, I have clock sent from the clock out of the S2400 to a sequencer in my modular system. MIDI clock simultaneously sent to a BeatStep Pro, which is also sequencing my modular system, and the S2400 is playing back its own patterns at the same time. So you can see that there are numerous ways to connect the S2400 to other hardware devices or to a digital audio workstation. In the next video, we'll discuss some new updates that have been added as well as some hints and tips to try with your unit.